Hello everyone, my name is Jaime Alonso Candao. I'm director at Nonica.io and I'm very glad to be here in this new edition of uh, BIM Coordinator Summit 2024 for the MENA region. Uh, today I'm going to talk about implementing a monitoring and automation strategy at Viraven and Boss, the Dutch engineering firm. Uh, but before going into the presentation, I wanted to introduce a little bit about what we do and who we are. So we're a small company based in Delft in the Netherlands and uh, we are focused on developing custom solutions for Revit as well as implementing automation strategies uh, for companies. So we develop uh, automation scripts like Dynamo, Python or c -sharp scripts. Uh, we are Autodesk authorized developers uh, and we also have products publishing Autodesk App Store. So without further ado, the structure of the presentation of today is going to consist mainly in three parts. The first part is going to be about the implementation of the BIM automation strategy at Vitaven and Boss. The second part is going to be about the monitoring of the automation strategy and how we use data to support decision making in the, in the automation strategy. And finally, we're going to introduce you how you can start creating your own automation strategy today and how you can create your own custom toolbar in Revit and share them with your colleagues in two clicks. So first of all, why we came into place? Well, uh, Bitaven and Boss had a library of unused scripts, Python and Dynamo, and they found that uh, most of the users did not have the expertise and knowledge to execute them. So they wanted to make those scripts accessible to everyone in the company. And therefore, we enabled them to integrate those scripts as a simple Revit bottoms that every Revit user can use. Finally, the purpose was to increase productivity as well as to promote a company specific standards and workflows. We use mainly Revit 2023 uh, as the design framework, but we also use Python and Dynamo 2.13 as the development environment. Finally, uh, we use our own product, Nonica Tab Pro, uh, to manage the scripts and also gather data about the automation strategy and improve it over time. The first step was to make a selection from uh, their library. So we basically uh, had several meetings with them. Um, uh, we selected the uh, scripts that uh, were going to be used more often in across projects, um, uh, integrate them as Revit bottoms, as you see in the script. I'm not going to go into the details of all of them, but I at least want to introduce you a little bit about what they are about. So the first one in the left is import satellite image based on the coordinates of the Revit model. This brings a, a satellite image from Google Maps straight into the model and place it as background. Then we have a calculate average topo level, also very helpful when you have like a topo surface that uh, you want to calculate the average uh, level for starting, let's say the ground floor. Uh, in the third place, we have the create 3D view from section. When you are working on a section or on a, a ceiling plan, uh, you want to sometimes uh, explore a certain objects to understand it better. So once you select it, you just click in this bottom and you can explore and visualize that object in a 3D view. Then we have the add coordinate to all piles. Uh, this is a specific script for uh, working with piles. Once you have all the piles set, you add the coordinates to the parameters of the piles. Then for managing marks parameters in Revit, this script was helpful to uh, not only define, but also to clean them when necessary. Uh, then we have the fill sheet parameters from Excel. This was also very helpful to interact with Excel sheets that were used sometimes to define parameters values in projects. Additionally, we have adjust floors to 3D polyline. In some cases, there are floors that are not flat and they needed to uh, define the shape of uh, those floors based on 3D polylines. So with this script, you can reshape floors based on uh, 3D polylines. Additionally, we have connect bins to floor. Very helpful when you have like the sloppy floors or uh, sloppy roofs mainly, and you want to sla snap uh, beams into the bottom of those elements. Then we have dimensions from model line. This is an automatic way of creating dimensions from uh, model lines. 
and finally a, a way of creating hatch files from model lines so they can be used not only in Revit but also in other software solutions like AutoCAD and so on. Based on these bottoms we went into the implementation so the first step was to install Nonica Tap in the professionals computer but then we also share with the with those professionals the, the toolbar with the Python and Dynamo scripts so they could start working with the scripts and uh, we could also start having feedback meeting with them. But additionally, using Nonica Tab, uh, we were gathering data on the background and using that data to also improve the strategy. So we used that to update the toolbar. So we replace uh, scripts, we update bottoms, we added new bottoms as well, and we also uh, use that information to have uh, conversations with the Revit professionals and iterate over the strategy. So this was an iterative process that uh, follow on and on. And after uh, several weeks, the purpose was that they had a solid automation strategy implemented. So after the selection and development phase of some of the scripts, we follow into the standardization and then we follow into sharing those scripts. So the standardization process was essential to make sure that the scripts were deployed properly. So the first step was, was to check the compatibility of the different scripts because some of them were existing. We needed to check that they were compatible with all Revit versions, that they were to be used in different uh, projects and situations as well as we didn't want scripts that were project specific we wanted scripts that were versatile enough to be used across different projects and situations those tasks could be uh, more often automated then from there we uh, chose a common language in this case english and we translate uh, the scripts that were in dutch to english as well as we uh, created a standard way of showing uh, the information to the final users. So the uh, user interface was standardized so they could find the information in the right order and in a concise and clear way. Uh, we also work on structuring that information, for example, in the description of the bottoms. So they did not have to spend 10 minutes reading a, a description of a, a script, but instead they could just go into, uh, the, into the key uh, bullet points of this uh, scripts and get the overall idea of what they needed and how the script was working. So from there, we went into the deployment. We created a central hub that was the first step into OneDrive as they were using OneDrive uh, as the company server. And in there, we placed the central toolbar file. We created a .nonica file that included all the information of the toolbar that we just explained not only the icons, names, description, but also all the scripts, shortcuts, and all the information regarding the bottoms in one single file. And then uh, in that central hub, we also uh, gather information about the executions of the bottoms by the different users. The seven professionals that we started with had access to that uh, central location. So every execution they run sent uh, the execution data to the central hub and we could later analyze that but additionally every time Anonica tab bottom was pushed the version of the toolbar uh, was checked and uh, if it was not the latest version uh, the toolbar was automatically updated so in that way thanks to Anonica tab we were able to update the toolbar remotely in all the computers at once and make sure that all the users were running the latest version of the toolbar. So from there, I also got access to uh, the central hub and I used the access to visualize and analyze the executions. Based on that information, I update, I add, replace and work on the scripts and update the toolbar in all the computers remotely. So uh, the data collection, uh, basically, every time a button was pushed, there were 15 fields of information that, that were gathered. And uh, not only information about the user, but also information about the time span, the date and time, the, for example, the bottom that was pushed, 
different software version like Dynamo or Revit version, as well as how the, the bottom was run, if it was a schedule or, or if it was run from a shortcut. And that information was very helpful to uh, later on make, make decision in the strategy. So using Nonica tab uh, and the building graphs in Nonica tab, we uh, imported uh, the data very simply in two clicks and uh, we analyze and visualize the data as you see in the screen. So because of data protection, we cannot show data from the implementation strategy of Vitamin and Boss, but instead we show a sample data so you can have an idea how the visualization and how the analysis can help you in your uh, decision making. So uh, basically, uh, yeah, going into the settings panel into data analytics, we have the first a graph which is about the overall execution status, all the uh, successful executions, if there were warnings, if there were errors in any of the, of the executions. And then we have the timeline graph. As you see in the timeline graph, we can see uh, for different time periods, the executions, we can see 48 hours, 60 days, 18 months. And we can see how the execution, the automation strategy is going. We can see if we have less errors now than before, if we have uh, more executions now than before, if there are more automated tasks now than before. Uh, additionally, at the right, we have the different software version, the different uh, Revit version that were used, Dynamo version that were used by the different users. Additionally, at the bottom, probably one of the most interesting part is the execution by Revit bottoms. So every bottom, uh, we could explore how many times it was run. And for example, if uh, there was a bottom that was uh, not run at all, we could replace it. If there was a bottom that has certain warnings, we could work on it and update it uh, to improve uh, the strategy. So from there, uh, we also have the execution by users, also very helpful to, for example, the tech users that are not using the, the different bottoms and have discussions with them but also to maybe propose trainings to explain them uh, the software if, if they have doubts or uh, to reassign licenses if uh, they are not in a position to use those scripts. Um, based on that information, we work on the scripts. We make several updates. I'm not going to go through all of the updates we made, but at least I wanted to go to one of them so you can have an idea of the process. So in uh, this case, uh, there were three new scripts that were added to uh, the toolbar, the three scripts on the left. Well, we, for example, created a script to add a, a record into a design log. So instead of having to go into central location, look for a file uh, and add every single change that happened in the design, uh, they could just push that information uh, straight from Revit. Then uh, we also have exporting uh, scripts from uh, Revit into DWG or IFC. These are standard ways of exporting models for the company and very easy to use in just one click. And additionally, we also work on the existing uh, scripts, updating uh, some parts of them if it was required. So after the implementation strategy, we came with uh, some conclusions. The first conclusion was that simple scripts were run uh, more often than uh, complex scripts, as they were more easy to understand by the final users. The human and uh, the organizational culture play a key role in the implementation of these kind of strategies. When we were in the last stage of our implementation, uh, we transferred the strategy into a BIM coordinator. We have several meetings with him, with him to explain the tool, to explain how it was working, so they could keep improving and updating the toolbar after we left. Of course, we still uh, give them support, but uh, on a different uh, role. And then finally, the efficiency. We estimated that around 15% uh, the increase in the work efficiency, and this was translated not only in time safe, um, money safe. In many cases, they explained that it was frustrating to search as boring and it was not motivational for, uh, for them. So this helped them to uh, get more involved in their job and also increase their efficiency. 
And uh, as part of the uh, last part, the third part of this presentation, I also wanted to uh, introduce how you can start your automation strategy with the contact with, we had with different companies in the industry. We saw that not all companies have a library of scripts, of Dynamo scripts and Python scripts because they don't have the expertise. So we created a way to have your uh, own custom toolbar without even have to develop anything. So you don't have to be a developer to uh, do so. So the first step, what we started doing is creating set of bottoms. So these are ready to use bottoms that you can use to uh, start automating workflows. We have different set of them. For example, we have the uh, best of the best, the cleaners. Cleaners are, for example, uh, bottoms that are used to clean and yeah, get your model lighter. Um, uh, basically, uh, you can also start with empty bottoms. And once you choose your set of bottoms, uh, you can customize your toolbar. You can uh, go to one bottom, for example, if you don't use it, you can just go into setup bottom and use one of the bottoms from our, from our library. We have more than 20 bottoms integrated. So once you choose and customize your toolbar to your needs, to the bottoms you think are more helpful for you, apart from uh, the ready to use bottoms, you can also integrate, as I said, like Dynamo scripts or Python scripts. Once you have your toolbar ready, you can just share them with other colleagues very easily. It literally takes two clicks. So, and after that, of course, you can monitor as you saw in the previous slides of the presentation. You, you can find more information about us uh, at nonica.io. And if you have any question, please feel free to share them with me at uh, jaime at nonica.io. And I will be very glad to, to, to try to answer them. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy. Bye-bye.